Let's see, it's 950. If you're not here, you snooze, you lose. Catch it in the, the VODs. But we're gonna get started with uh, the dark story behind The End of Drake. This is by Rapzella. Let's get it. Hey, welcome back into today's video. Kendrick Lamar and Drake have been going back and forth on the internet with rap songs exposing each other. They're dragging other rappers in and they don't want anything to do with it. While at the same time Drake alleges that Kendrick hurts women, Kendrick is saying that Drake is a P3D yo. And this is when- The whole fucking pedo and then uh, the woman beater thing. Um, I mean, technically Kendrick hasn't, like they haven't really addressed the whole the woman beater allegations. I I'm just assuming it just wasn't credible and that's why this hasn't been addressed. I'm just gonna assume that already. And the pedo thing, I mean, like, Drake said he didn't touch Millie Bobby Brown or whatever, but that's pretty much it. That's all we really got right now, still. Like, it's been, like, it's been a while now, honestly. When people started digging up suspicious situations in Drake's past with young girls, not to mention rumors that he lives with and supports registered offenders in the same house with his children. Amidst this, Kendrick drops Drake's dog, showing exactly where he lives. And now somebody's That's in the crazy. hospital, and the police should probably investigate before somebody else gets hurt. In today's video, so there's a big rap beef going on right now between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Nobody knows really what's all going on. There's a lot of information that's coming out there, but I do, am apparently. going to explain it to you. So as you can see, top stories are trending between Kendrick Lamar and Drake, and uh, Drake and Millie Bobby Brown's controversial friendship explained. We got that soon too. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Drake exactly. is a Canadian rapper and singer. And Kendrick Lamar is an American rapper and songwriter. In one of Kendrick Lamar's diss tracks, you might notice this as the uh, the cover photo. Now, if you don't know what this is, one user on Twitter saying, the artwork of Not Like Us is supposed to look like Drake's home in Toronto, and the red pants looking like the offender registry map. I think he won this off skill. <laughs> I think he won this much better. Oh, God. Than he won it <laughs> off of strategy. Did I, can't, I can't even lie, bro. That was a power move, bro. Pulling out the, the little pedo dots on top of Toronto on the Toronto home and making it like the the cover for the song. No, oh, that that was like that's petty. <laughs> it's so petty, but it, it's so good. <laughs> he got his ass, bro. He's so cooked. More win. Let's see. Rap beefs expert here. <laughs> the situation also has a little bit to do with J Cole, which he kind of bounced out, and we're gonna talk about that. But apparently these three were called the trio or something like that the, the trio uh, the of three. like amazing rap rappers the media dubbed them the big three there so it was go. j cole kendrick lamar and drake they were the big three but to completely understand the situation we need to go back to 2013 where on a track with big sean Kendrick Lamar oh, kind of challenged about troll. Drake and J. Cole and a few others in the industry. I'm usually homeboys with the same I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them should know what time it is. And that goes for Jeremiah Cole. No, 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 no. Y'all can't sit there and just like, you can't listen to it that way, man. Hold on, bro. Does he really went in, bro? If y'all haven't heard it, here you go. Let me bless your ears real quick. All right, you ready? Copyright, you know, whatever, but fuck it. Miscellaneous miles, never explaining the miles. Devilish grin for my alias, aliens who respond, pedal and sin, thinking maybe when you get old, you're gonna You ain't heard it, man. Tune in. I don't smoke crack, motherfucker, I sell it. Bitch, everything I rap is a quarter piece to your melon. So if you have a relapse, just relax and pop in my disc. Don't you pop me the fucking pill, I'ma pop you, then give you this. Tell Flex to drop a bomb on this shit. So many bombs win the alarm like Vietnam on this shit. So many bombs make Farrakhan think that's a dime in this bitch. One at a time, I line them up and bomb on it. Mom, when she watching the kids, I'm in a destruction mode if the gold exists. I'm in Poland like the Pope. I'm a Muslim on poke. I'm Machiavelli's offspring. I'm the king. New York, king of the coast. One hand, I juggle them both. The juggernauts are in your juggler. He really did pop off on them back then, bro. Church pews and funeral faces, cardio bracelets. For my women friends, I'm in Vegas. Who the fuck y'all thought it's supposed to be? If Phil Jackson came back, still no coaching me. I'm uncoachable, I'm unsociable. Fuck y'all clubs, fuck y'all bitches. Show Instagram, get gobble these nuts. Gobble a dick up to your hiccup. My big homie corrupt. This the same flow that put the rap game on the crutch. I see 
these niggas transform like villain Decepticons. Molly's probably turn these niggas to fucking Lindsay Lohan. A bunch of rich ass white girls yeah, looking for Molly's plan with Barbies. Wreck the push before you give them the car key. Judge me to the monarchy. Blessings to Paul McCartney. You call me a black beetle. I'm either that or a Marley. Oh, tell it. Dressed in all black. This is not for the fan of Elvis. I'm aiming straight for your pelvis. You can't stomach me. You plan on stumping me, bitch. I've been jumping for you. Put a gun on me, bitch. I put one on yours. I'm shining kind of reach. James Bond. I don't know what made him go so hard, bro. <laughs> Shots being that great to base all the time about who's the best MC, Kendrick Jigger. Here we go. Eminem, Andre 3000, the rest of y'all. New niggas, just new niggas, don't get involved. And I ain't rocking no more designer shit. White tees and Nike Cortez, this red Corvette synonymous. I'm usually homeboys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with. But this is hip hop, and them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes. Hey, when he called out all them niggas back then, bruh, he had everybody shook, including Drake. And Drake couldn't say shit back then, bro. He really was stuck. And that's probably what all this shit is about originally in the first place. But Kendrick never really liked that nigga in the first place, bro. But y'all y'all get the point. I don't know if y'all need to hear the whole verse, but y'all have to look at the, the control verse, but I look at the song. The internet is available. We're going to go back to the uh, exposing video. But y'all get the point. Kendrick killed all them niggas back in the day, bro. It was just that simple with just this verse. They were talking about it for years. Still talking about it now. Oh, it was which absolutely is J. crazy. Cole. Big Crit, Well, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, this is the call Jay outs. Electron, Tyler, and Mac Miller, which is interesting. He calls Big Sean out on his own on track. His own he's song. like, I love for you all, but I'm trying to, uh, oof, he's really <laughs> trying to make sure your core fans never heard alive, you ninjas. I don't want to hear not one more noun or verb from you. What is competition? I'm trying to raise the bar high. I remember when Kendrick Lamar came out on the scene. It was just really big. It was constant. Everybody was listening to Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. So this is interesting. So this they were dubbed the big three. And then J. Yeah. Cole out of nowhere comes in uh, this recently in October in a song called First Person Shooter where he had some words to say about Kendrick. But it's, it's kind of weird that he even involved himself because he's not really the type that has been one to jump in the middle of beefs like this maybe because he was considered part of the big three he felt entitled to say what was on his mind this is what he said love when they argue the hardest mc is it k dot is it Aubrey or me we the big three like we started the league but right now i feel like muhammad ali yeah, seems a little bit like one. friendly fire they're all kind of competitors but they all want to be friends but jayco seems to play it really safe like i would go as far as to say is he fence sits because he does his rhymes in a way that seemed to be just really careful. We're in the 2013 song where yeah, Kendrick Lamar Yeah, as a K-Dot, as a Aubrey or me, he, yeah. <laughs> there was He's being safe as hell. Nothing left to the imagination versus uh, J. Cole where he does a cutesy Muhammad Ali analogy. It's interesting because it does seem like a, a diss of its own New now that I'm looking at know. it. Like this line about the Super Bowl where Kendrick Lamar played at the Super Bowl. Which Kendrick obviously didn't appreciate that because he referred to those as sneak disses and subliminal shots. Not only that, but he ended up dropping a verse on Metro Boomin and Future's song. Uh, it was on March 22nd, I believe. And it was oh, called like, like That. that. Yeah. In that song, he declared that the era of the big three was no more. <laughs> stating, he said, sneak diss and first person shooter. It's pretty obvious. Think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. Mother the big three. It's just big me. Mother Nigga, it's just big me. This is kind of where Jayco's responses come in, and they are I known as hard hitting. I don't think he's interested in fighting. He responded with a song called Seven Minute Drill, to which he released in a mixtape that he dropped on April 5th. He said, I can't hey, in the minute, deal, bro. so I'm good when it's tension. He's still doing shows, but he fell off like The Simpsons. He says, Your first is classic, your last is tragic, tragic, your second, second ship put people to sleep, sleep, but they gassed it. But they gassed it. Now, he's talking about Kendrick's album To Pimp a Butterfly, which was met with widespread critical acclaim. People literally called it one of the best hip hop albums of all time. So that doesn't make any sense at all, and it was received poorly from fans. Your last ship was tragic. So, J. Cole did delete that song. I always say that damn edit, bro. I saw that coming because the mixtape was my delete later. Jayco also addressed <laughs> deleting this, saying, So I'm so proud of that project, except for one part. Yo, know, checked out, it was conflicted on TikTok. It's one part of that that make me feel like, man, that's the lame I ever did in my life, right? And I know this is not what 
a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now. Like, it's war time. No, I don't do that. But I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all yeah. heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord. It's always change of dropping time, it. I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you going to do, Cole? <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do, Cole? My niggas like, Bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh, my God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my nigga. It's war time. <laughs> right? Niggas want to see blood. This forever going to be a fucking classic for the video, bro. One, I know my heart, you know what I mean? And like, I know how I feel the about Cole apology. my peers, these two niggas that I just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, this is how J. Cole oh, feeling right now, away. bro. He but feeling real good about it right blood. now. I don't know if y'all can feel that, you but doing me. He doing all right, you feel me? He's doing, doing all right. To say, Yo, what's good? Of to, like, I appreciate the follow. this music out. I rushed Michael. A lot of y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel. That reminds me of like I, bad on I show me. speed. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back, and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end, yeah, of the music day, video. When I listen to it, and when it comes out, and I see the talk, that don't sit right with my spirit. That make me feel that disrupts my peace. So what I want to say right here tonight. And we saw the whole J Cole apology, my and, boy. And I'm exposing Drake right now. Angle, and downplay this, but, this nigga. Well, not me, but let me see what uh, you Catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a microphone? That's true, he really is. Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofy. It make, I say all that to say it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm about to check it out my nigga now. really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot, I'm gonna take your chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Cause I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Past two days felt terrible. Like, man, what's up, bro? Know how good I've been sleeping for the past ten years. Honestly, if we bro, go through trials bro. and tribulations, tests. It's like the price you pay for the good times. Like everything is going great, everything is good. You only know it's good. You only know it's great because you went through the other stuff. You, you, you wouldn't know your boys here without the bad. <laughs> if you just only had good, then you wouldn't know it's good. If you only had bad, you wouldn't know it's bad. You have to have a contrast. There has to be a counter distinction between two things, and you just you got to juxtapose them right next to each other. And hey, yo, my my nigga yapping, bro. What do you, what do you say, bro? I lost track. Hold on. Why do I went way too far? You only know it's great because you went through the other stuff. You you, you wouldn't know we good in, without the bad. Attention. If you just only had good. Then I already got you, bro. I read your mind, bro. I'm already here. If you only had bad, you wouldn't know it's bad. You have to have a contrast. There has to be a counter distinction between two things. And you just, you just I saw your little Facebook, too. Your little Drake names are funny. Other, and Keep sending them, though. You can see the duality of the existence. <laughs> I just went so... Uh, sorry. Sometimes when I do research, I, I go... I get he went nuts, bro. Deep. It makes sense now that he explained himself. I can see why he was kind of floating back and forth. He was fence sitting because he did feel s multiple tops away at the same time. So when <laughs> things are seriously getting dark, there was some shots oh, no, fired bro, outside of Drake's home. I believe uh, his bodyguard was hit. And so I can completely understand if you look at the angle, J. Cole seeing how dark and deep this was getting. He probably didn't want that on his legacy at all. And I, I mean... I wouldn't need to. The real winner is low key J. Cole. When you're looking at like everybody and how. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, he's not capping at all. J. Cole is probably the winner just because, like, that nigga was on a beach just like last week. Like, that man chilling, bro. Like, he, he don't wanna have a care in the world. He's literally chilling right now. Like, Drake being exposed in his, his property, like, online now. And then, uh, niggas pulling up, shooting at him or some shit. Like, I don't know, man. This is getting crazy out there for him.
is they're gonna walk out of this j cole does not have a scratch on him he doesn't have a tint in the armor he's walking off into the sunset right now because the reality of the fact is people are changing their sentiment they're now excited for the fall off they want to know what cole's perspective is going to be on all this and they respect him for not entering into the shade room chamber and not really entertaining something that's turned into a disaster class for lack of a better word J. Cole found something else to do, bro. And when the borderline is tau equals zero, the eigenvalues are someone, please. electron. Okay, J. J. Cole probably did win. Yeah. I think Kendrick and Drake probably should stop. It's cool to have diss songs back. I mean, they did for now. Eminem and uh, Machine Gun. Comes great responsibility. Remember that. We get some good songs out of it, but when the culture gets this destructive, it only hurts it. I got too many tabs pulled up. I think. <laughs> computer froze. Wow. I swear to God, I'm going to switch to Mac. One user saying, I hope history remembers J. Cole as a smart man. For He's that one user. It was Afrocentric, bro. Another saying, J. Cole probably somewhere in nature listening to the birds chirp swinging his feet. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! For real. Another saying, J. Cole's decision to stay out of this beef will go down as one of the greatest moments of foresight in modern history. I completely understand this. As I was making was this video, you saw me being like, J. Cole, like, what? Brain and slug. then, like, as it progressed, I'm like... Oh, I see. That's why you got to wait for all the facts to come out and let people make their mind and understand with hindsight what is actually going on. People's got to process things, you know? So leading up to Drake dropping his first response, he was trolling Metro Boomin and Kendrick with things like this. Metro! Yeah, the, the memes, yeah. Shut your whole ass up. Your whole ass up. Drake also oh. actually hired a real band to go outside of the place that Future and Metro were promoting no, he didn't. their collaborative album. Here's them promoting We Don't Trust You, and then here's Drake. Bruh. In general, he's been just trolling people back and forth. He Finally, didn't do he that dropped shit, the song bruh. called Push Ups on April 13th. So in the song, he talks about rumors where he stole Metro's girlfriend, and then he makes fun of Kendrick Lamar's height. <laughs> I think it's childish. He says, how are you it big was. stepping with size seven men's on? Then before Kendrick could even respond, Drake dropped another diss track on April 19th, I believe it was, called Taylor Made Freestyle, where yeah, he says AI uh, that he, he thinks the delayed response from Kendrick's because he didn't want to compete with a Taylor Swift album that just came out. And it had AI-generated voices of Tupac and uh, Snoop, Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Why did he do that? Snoop Dogg yeah, gave just asked to this saying. They did what? When? How? Are you sure? I'm going back to bed. Good night. One you're just saying they forced you into it. It was finally on April 30th Kendrick Lamar responded and he dropped a song titled Euphoria, Euphoria which is named after the show that Drake co-produces. He says you're not a rap even artist, you're a that, scam bro. artist with cap. the hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hilfiger stood out, but FUBU never been in your collection. He goes on in the song saying that he's uncomfortable with Drake using the N-word because he's mixed race. How many more fairy tale stories about your life till we've had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel you're black enough? He also mm, goes on to talk about his last rap battle with Pusha T, where Pusha T put out there that he had a secret son named Adonis. I got a son Adonis. but I can see you don't know nothing about that. Waking them up, know nothing about, about that. that. And telling them to pray, know nothing <laughs> about, about that. that. <laughs> giving them tools to walk through life like day to day, know nothing about that. Teaching them morals, integrity, discipline. Listen, man, you don't know, you don't nothing, know nothing about, about that. that. Speaking the truth and consider what God's considering. You don't you know, know nothing, nothing about, about that. that. Oh, we got him. Gotta take care of your kids. <laughs> yeah, he got That's what you gotta do. It's so important to be a father. You can't just be out here just having relations with every single woman unprotected and then have a child and then just... This, there's no way if you're having relations with these women and you're not planning on having a child with them you probably shouldn't be having unprotected relations with them whoever you're dating right now whoever you're seeing if or if, even if it's your girlfriend you're in a relationship right now i want you to ask yourself is this the person that you can see raising your children is this the woman that you can see spending the rest of your life with if you're out here stuck in a limbo 
and you don't really know and have no direction or path, that's a good place to start. And that takes a man to admit. That's one of the most fundamental strengths that you can have within yourself. A lot of these relationships has got two people in them that are just kind of in the relationship with no advance of the future at all. You're just wasting your spent. time and you're wasting your time. There's nothing's going to happen. And the other person that you're in a relationship, they might not care. They might be completely happy with everything that's going on because they don't have the same vision that you have. Sometimes if you're in a relationship with somebody and they're cool with it, if you don't see a future with that person, it's your obligation as a man to step up and do the right thing. I'm not trying to be your daddy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Drake's been trolling responses on his Instagram, uh, for example. In Kendrick's song Euphoria, he says this. That was a lot of with Drake, but holy shit. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. We hate the... Confused Drake posted on Instagram uh, a movie clip from 10 Things I Hate About You where the girl is going over the things that she hates and loves about uh, her crush. I hate you so much it makes me sick. It even makes me rhyme. <laughs> I remember this. I hate it. I hate the way you're always right. I hate it when you lie. I hate it when you make me laugh. Even worse when you make me cry. Not too long after that, Kendrick dropped another track. I believe it was on uh, May 3rd. It was the memes and the trolling, bro. LA. It didn't work though. The song. It. I don't. I'm not aware. I do not know at this time if it in fact was 616 in LA. But that same day, Drake dropped another diss oh, yeah, song called Family Matters, where he alleged infidelity and domestic in his current relationship with fiance Whitney Alford. You the black messiah wifing up a mixed queen and hit vanilla cream to help out with your self esteem. Drake also That's still bars that though. It child really is. was fathered by the his manager, which is strange, but within an hour, Kendrick responded on May 3rd, 2024 with Meet the Grams. In this song it escalated, he starts attacking Drake's family and writes uh, letters to his mother as well as to his son. <laughs> Dear Adonis, I'm sorry that man is your father. Let them. me be honest. It takes a man to be a man. Your dad is not responsive. Oof. To his mother, <laughs> Dear Sandra, your son's got some habits. I hope you don't undermine them. Especially with all the girls that's hurt inside this climate. You a woman, so you know how it feels to be in alignment. He also writes a letter to a third mysterious person who is supposed to be Drake's secret daughter, so there's another secret child. Saying, Dear baby girl, I'm sorry your father is not active inside your world. He don't commit to much but his music, but yeah, that's for sure. He's a narcissist misogynist living inside his songs. Tried destroying families rather than taking care of his own. Kendrick also makes a reference to Drake's Damn, uh, bars. Fruity past with younger women, which we're, we're going to talk about. You ever heard 616? Sandra, sit down. What I'm about to say is heavy. Now listen. Mm. Your I'm son's sure a sick stream, man with not? sick thoughts. I think guys like him should die. Him and Weinstein should get effed up in sales for the rest of their life. It also says he's got offenders on Hovo that he keep a monthly allowance. A child should never be compromised and he keeping his child around them. It references back to his song Not Like Us where on the album you. cover it has the offenders registry with several several indicators on Drake's home. Now I want to take a second to talk about a couple of the creepy situations to do with Drake and younger women. There was a disturbing video that surfaced of Drake kissing a 17 year old at a concert. <laughs> I made some noise. Three, was it 320p or 480p? Damn, this shit longer than I remember, bro. Pause. This is a longer video than I remember. Yeah, Drake just silly. Smell like herbal essence. <laughs> oh no. Nah. They haven't said you're 17 yet. But knowing afterwards is just like, ooh. 
<laughs> just seeing that she like just knowing that she's like seventeen, like afterwards, bro. Oh man, when did they say it? Not only you. Oh yeah, he didn't need to say that one. He trying to he trying to distract. Yeah, not on the recording, bro. Oh, oh no. Drizzard. So that was in 2010, so Drake would have been about 23 years old, uh, kissing a 17-year-old. That's not good. Uh, f k there's, that's the, uh, I, nope. Oh. Now this girl actually. He really like, bro. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, like, you know, at first, he had a little bit of cover of not knowing, and then he found out, but then he proceeded to make it worse than what he did before he, he knew, like Drizzy man, they got you on the camera, man. I think I believe like it's not a case or something because she was like, it's legal in wherever they were at during that time. So I think that's why there is no case. But I know uh, old girl has said something. She she said something like on the internet recently. So I don't know, man. That's like that's that's wild that he proceeded to just go for it. Like, and the, the boy felt good afterwards, bro. I guess it really is for all the dogs, bro. She did know. come out recently and say that this was no big deal. Oh, yeah, here we go. I kind of I kind of beg to differ. Going on to say this was purely for his stage act. I was 17 years old, and 31. I'm 31 Damn. now. It was nothing then, Time and fly. it's nothing now. Regarding the video that's going around, I was 17 back then, and I'm 31 now. This was a concert that my dad took me to back in high school. Drake's Damn, entourage dad was an actually audience. picked me out from the crowd of people, not Drake himself. BTW, performers always bring up fans on stage. It's part of their show. It's nothing then, and it's still nothing now. Now that I've cleared these false narratives, I'm going back to study for my law school exams. Wish me luck. Good luck hey, what's your best of luck, stuff, for real? Honestly, saying that his entourage picked you out of the crowd is not very good right now, as Kendrick has aimed at his entourage, saying that, you know... Wah, wah, one user wah, saying, wah, this wah. is still weird. Y'all noticed that she started working at Republic Records in 2016 and seems to be part of the music business. Something seems off. Another user oh, saying, she's part Jesus of business? Christ. I, I think I've said that uh, several times while I've been making this video. There was also a situation back in 2018 where rumors circulated about an 18-year-old model that was dating Drake. One article says on August 25th, Bella posted sweet, coupley Instagram photos with Drake alongside the caption, No place I'd rather be. If that's not couple confirmation, what is? And if you go to <laughs> click this now, it has now been removed. Ooh. But even creepier... Apparently, Drake first met Bella Harris when she was 16. Oh, no. One article saying apparently the Drizzy. two first met in the summer 16 tour in 2016, hosted by Drake and Future. Funny enough, Harris would have been 16 at the time as well. Obviously, we don't know if that's when they started dating, but yeah, it raises at least a few red flags of grossness. Honestly, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, bro. They don't gather all this fucking evidence and shit, and then it's gonna compile in like a few years like Diddy, and then it all you know, sees his house and shit like that, just like fucking Diddy. And he's gonna be uh Diddy too, bro. Like, man, Diddy just got exposed big time, and now Drake is like, it's gonna probably get all this or get this little bits of info out. It's gonna slow down. Yeah, you really can't defend Drake, bro. You, it's it's really hard to. But it's gonna we're gonna get all this information just like we have been already. It's slowed down now, and everybody's trying to you know grasp that straw, trying to figure out something. But eventually, we're gonna get like something <laughs> huge, bro. Pause. No Diddy, of course, but. 
some big piece of something information is gonna is gonna blow us away, bro. It's gonna be crazy, and I feel like it's not gonna be just about Drake. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Another very troubling situation comes from the actress uh, Millie Bobby Brown of Stranger Things, where it was discovered that 31-year-old Drake was texting 14-year-old uh, Brown. One user mm, saying, when we found out thing. Drake 31 is texting Millie Bobby Brown 14 and talking about how much I miss you so. It's actually come from an interview with Millie Bobby Brown where she said this. I love him. I met him in Australia and um, he's honestly so fantastic and a great friend and a great uh, great role model. You know, we text, we just text each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. He's coming to Atlanta, so I'm definitely going to go and see him. I'm so excited. Yeah. You and Drake? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what advice does he give you? Like, what does he say? Uh, about boys. He helps me. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. I found a clip where Millie goes into a little bit more detail. Drake, she, she wants to see me. And I was like, okay, we're going. So I, like, got my outfit prepared. I went there. And, and he was such a fanboy. And I was such a fangirl that we, and honestly, we text all the time now. He helps me with everything, like, just life lessons. Um, he's amazing. He's a great human being. And we went to dinner afterwards, and we had dinner the next day, and then we met in... That's really interesting. And I Now, whenever, like, I'm picturing whenever she's saying all this, like, I feel like it's such out of context. I feel like he's about to... I don't know. He seems like a smart person before I start judging this dude. <laughs> I feel like he's not about to say anything crazy about it. But I think whenever she says we're out to dinner and stuff like that, I really doubt it's just him and her. I feel like it's, like, the whole entourage. She has, like, you know, her group... He has his group and like, I don't know, they're, they're probably linking like information to business. Hopefully that, you know, with that, with all the people there, that's what that's all about. And uh, if there's any privatized stuff, I don't know. But the dinner and stuff like that, that sounds like something that they would do like as a group of people. I, I feel like that's what's happening. I doubt they really had like this alone occasion and she's just casually chill about it like this. Like, no way. But I don't know. Let's see what he says about it. No, also, I want to talk mine. a little bit about what <laughs> Kanye West said about Kanye. him and Lucian Grange. For those of you that don't know, Lucian Grange was recently added to the Diddy lawsuit saying that he aided and abetted. They aided and abetted Mr. Combs' perpetrating of coercive, not great things, saying that they were co-conspirators who knowingly benefited. He, of course, denied this. But I want you guys to hear what Kanye West said. The word on the street is that Lucian was setting up Drake to take Diddy's spot as the go-to rapper for certain Hollywood elites. Something obviously wrong with this one individual that no one wants to speak about. And I feel like you're the only person that's going to really put it out there. I like, say rich baby yeah. daddy. It's like Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. Wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy named so, Lucian. So all of his streams and the number ones <laughs> is controlled by someone named Lucian. Universal he came for president. CEO, <laughs> one of the most powerful men in entertainment, Lucian Green. Maybe, Maybe if Drake, Drake has a rich baby daddy. See in this video, but it takes me back to Kendrick's line where he said, Cat Williams said, get the truth. So I'm gonna get mines. The embassy about to get raided too. It's only a matter of time. The embassy hey, he, being, he, of course, he, he flowed with that one. I felt that. I don't know if you guys know who Shane Gillis is, the comedian. He's a really funny guy. We so heard this goes, one. Every country song's just about exactly what a white guy's doing at that moment. It's like, I turn the radio up. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's music. That's what I like. He was on a podcast in 2019. They were talking about R. Kelly and Epstein. And, uh, he said this about Drake. I, mean, I do want to say this. I want to be on the record. Drake, sure. Drake's going to be, he's on that R. Kelly. Yeah, that's part of the first, uh, you think so? Drake, Drake exposure video, video well, whatever I get around that. It's it somewhat YouTube. known already, but it, this is one of those things where I want to, you know, you got to say something like, remember Louis, that whole thing. Yeah. And like, we knew about that. Yeah. And we were just like, I don't know. L Drake, Jersey Drake's into the young ones. He's going to get got <laughs> in the next then five years. Got. Yeah, I have a good theory on Jersey Drake. He's getting brought, brought down, bro. You think so? No doubt. That is extremely not good. He's, like, he's getting brought down, <laughs> That's bro. That's not good. The Hollywood industry is destructive. I, I covered a lot of the uh, stuff. You know, that guy sounds like uh, Bob's Burgers. Like, he sounds like the Bob like Bob from that, that show. That's exactly what Shane Dillow sounds like. He sounds just so chill, though. It went on with JoJo Siwa in my last oh, God, most recent Jojo video. Siwa. The industry is exploitative and it hurts these young girls jesus christ and kendrick's song not like us where the 
you know the po it's posted as the uh, the cover of uh, Drake's home, which we're gonna talk about that too. And all of these are the offenders that live at his house. He says, "Say Drake, I hear what you like a meteor to drop on him. You better not ever go to cell block one. To any bitch that talks to him and they in love, just make sure you hide your little sister from him. Also, saying why are you trolling like a ain't you tired trying to I'm strike a chord? It's probably a, a minor. minor. Oh, man. <laughs> Jesus. In Drake's most recent diss, the Heart the Part, Part Six, 6, which was released just two days ago, he basically denies everything that Kendrick says, and he even says that he uh, planted a mole to give Kendrick fake information and but Kendrick got moles too. Check now. We have no way of verifying any of the things that either Kendrick or Drake is saying. But Whitney, you can hit me if you need a favor. And when I say I hit your back, it's a lot safer. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Drake says, I plotted for a week and then we fed you the information. A daughter that's 11 years old, I bet he takes it. We thought about giving a fake name or destination, but you so thirsty, you're not concerned with the investigation. Instead, you in the Venice studio, it's a celebration. You gotta learn to fact yeah, no, check I didn't, I didn't feel as passionate. and be less impatient. Your fans are rejoicing thinking this is my expiration. Even the picture you use, the jokes, and the medication. Maybach glove and the drug he uses for less inflation. Master manipulator, you bit on the speculation. You dumb and reactive. I'm petty with dedication. And then he says, Why isn't Whitney hear his denying accent all that. of the allegations? You haven't seen the kids in six months. The distance is wild. So this stuff's getting really deep, and it's turning. Yeah, I'm saying personal. That's why J Cole sat out, uh, boy. There was shots fired outside Drake's home. You like shit? Can't May be me. 2024 update occurred at a residence on Park Lane Circle. The man shot was a security guard who was standing outside the gates of the home. The man remains in the hospital. Vehicle fled the scene. One article saying Drake's security guard hit outside rapper's Toronto home amid Kendrick Lamar beef. And they're currently reviewing the security footage outside Drake's house. Now, it's not lost on me that this happened after Kendrick exposed Drake's house on his album. I've covered enough commentary on YouTube to understand that this is a dox, 100%. This is literally a dox, a dangerous situation that sends people, that tells people where Drake lives. Like on YouTube, there have been whole channels taken down for doxes like this. According to the TOS, we consider content harassment. I was wondering if that was real or not. Like, I was like, isn't that legal or some shit? I don't know. Insults based on intrinsic attributes, including their protected group status or physical traits. This also includes harmful behaviors such as threats, bullying, doxing, or encouraging abusive fan behavior. And since Kendrick has posted his dox online, there have been three separate incidents. And for some reason, Drake decided to oh, sell yeah, his $88 million dollar Beverly Hills home, which is really strange for me. I, if, if I was him, I would be moving out of uh, the Toronto address. Psst. I see dead people. <laughs> and the fact that the song opens up like that, and it's a literal dox, it can only be taken as a threat. Damn, uh, I didn't even think about that, but that's... 1.7 million likes... That's fucking facts. You really could see that as a huge threat. He said he set all that up perfectly, but this, this is fucking chain out we're talking about, bro. He could have set that shit up real easily. Like he got the I see dead people at the beginning. He got the dots, like you, and people actually got shot up or like uh what is it, bodyguard got shot or something? Like, yo, like you might be onto something here, bro. This actually might be a thing. But he's like, you know, jading to the song and shit, but like he's naming all the bad shit Drake is doing and then like it's giving people reasons to kinda of take shots at him. Like in actual shots. I ain't talking about jabs, you talking about actual shots. That shit's wild. The 16,000 dislikes, Drake's The Heart Part 6 has 1.1 million dislikes to 666,000 likes. Not to mention that users are trolling Drake in the comment section. I love you too, Taylor. Have a good night. One user saying, if I was a P3DO, I would be arrested. My brother in Christ, Dan Snyder, is a free man. Alright, so that video wasn't bad. There's a lot of uh, information I've already seen.